Welcome to Thursday Night Knives. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco. And uh, tonight, well, tonight I'm being a paisan. I'm drinking a little red wine. And uh, I'm just thinking about knives tonight. And I hope you are too. Nick, always a pleasure. Nick, uh, something tells me Nick Martino, he's uh, he's another paisan. So good to have you here, sir. And uh, and everyone else. Um, yeah, just had a uh, had a had a great day here. It was beautiful outside. G Man W, what is going on, sir? I had a, 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 a teleworking day, so I got to walk the dog. Got to got to be at home. It was lovely. Uh, buongiorno, sir. Good, wonderful to have you, Bad Monkey. Good to have you here, sir. Chad, a pleasure as always, sir. And Facebook user, greetings to you, sir. Okay, Facebook user, let's get down to it. Today I decided was my day to put aside all of my past allegiances to uh, conspiracy theories and to actually get on Facebook and to work with the Facebook page slash group that uh, Jim set up for us two years ago, year and a half ago. And uh, um, so uh, sorry for my absence if you've been there, but now I'm going to be there just for knives. I'm not showing off, uh, you know, every time I get a scoop of ice cream or something like that. Uh, I know I sound like an old fart. Isn't that what the social media is for? I'm over here having ice cream at Ben and Jerry's. Well, I don't care, damn it. Uh, but I won't be doing that. Uh, it'll be mostly uh, just pictures posting my knives. And as usual, we'll have uh, all of the videos and podcasts and everything going up there. But I want to get to know and see who's over there because a lot of people have asked to join the group and I'm like, sure, James, it's a pleasure, sir, as always. Uh, so uh, Facebook, tell me, what, what do you what do you want out of it? What do you get out of it? How do you do it? How do you do the Facebook? <laughs> I get Instagram, it's pictures, you know, pictures. I like pictures. You just keep doing this. You see more and more pictures of knives. That's That's what I go to Instagram for. And occasionally there's someone that I'm, you know, that I have to follow uh, outside of the knife world. And I'm like, oh, there they are at a winery. Okay, more knives. All right, more knives, more knives. So uh, anyway, I don't know. So Facebook, I'm interested. Uh, it, uh, Jimmy Slash has a great community over there. A bunch of people have great community communities over there. And I kind of want to get to know you over there too. Um, so there you have it. Uh, so I feel a, a an update is in order for... No New Knives November, I'm sure you've heard by now, uh, that uh, I lasted 13 days, and uh, and then I actually had to, it was a moral imperative, um, I had to buy something because it was the new Little Rattler uh, from GEC in Maroon Micarta, and I knew that it wasn't going to last till December 1st. What's a guy to do? I like buying and selling on Facebook. Okay, this is what I'm looking for. Uh, that's the kind of information I want to know because I too want new places to buy and sell. Chad says, I only use Facebook for knife groups and buy and sell. Okay. Hmm. All right. And I think Edwin gets a lot of stuff there too. Renamed some new knives in November. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not no new knives. I mean, come on. That's so extreme. Do we have to be so extreme? We're living in a time of polarization. Rusty, how you doing, sir? Mark, pleasure to have you, Mr. Herrera. Um, but yeah, some new knives November. That's funny. So, uh, so I got, I, I, I ordered it. It was, uh, it was still there. I mean, shockingly, because I always miss out on the GEC drops. So uh, it helps to have a, a generous uh, a listener, viewer, friend out there uh, to get things that I miss. But this, uh, this little rattler had to get it. So I, I bought it. It has not arrived yet. And when it arrives, that's right. I'm not going to open it until December 1st. Aren't I a swell fella? <laughs> Dilip, it's a pleasure, sir. Good to have you here. Yes. What a big, what a big character. What a, what an awesome fella I am. Uh, knives me out. Good to have you. I only use Reddit. Uh, knife swap. It's a huge market on there. Reddit. God, to me, Reddit, you know what? This is going to sound funny and people are going to laugh. But I used to confuse Reddit with 4chan. I know it's ridiculous, but I did. I don't know. I'm just kind of like, I go there. I go I go to the internet for what I need. Uh, see, knife swap on Reddit is really, okay. All right. R slash knife swap. Better write it down. 
drinking wine r slash knife swap i read it okay timothy lovely to have you here sir <laughs> hello bob aka liar it's not liar it's human being i'm a human being and we are all human beings and um you know <laughs> all right and well, so here's the thing. Okay, so you hear about people who start running or start doing, you, you, okay, you listen to people who have iron wills. I'm not going to say I have an iron will. I'm pretty will powered with most things. Um, but, you know, those guys out there with iron wills like Jocko Willink or, you know, uh, other former Navy SEALs or whomever. And they say, you know, you let that one slip go and then it lets your mind think that you can slip again and again. And that is true. That is true, I got to say. And I know that uh, in several different ways. But with this in particular, after I got that, I was I started haunting uh, CollectorKnives.net. I'm yelling. I'm sorry I'm yelling. Uh, I, I've been told tonight I'm loud already, so. I apologize, uh, but uh, I've been haunting CollectorKnives.net, and I noticed, I'm not even going to tell you what I noticed, because I don't want you to go there before December 1st and get it out from underneath me. Uh, it's not liar. It's, fa <laughs> it's failure. Yes, but you didn't put an apostrophe in it's. So who's the failure? Caleb. <sighs> Lucky winner. Uh, it takes a strong man to admit his faults. Thank you, bad monkey. Uh, so... <sighs> Where was I? I don't, I don't even know. It, it's, I feel like I'm being a, this is not a safe space. Suddenly, just kidding. Uh, Lindy, I, I sent you a link to Knife Swap on Instagram so you can check it out. Definitely worth a look. Thank you. I'm going to do that. Maybe that's next after I conquer this, this Facebook thing. But, but, that, but that whole thing about letting one slip go. And then, so what I was saying is found something that I really, really desire. It's like, oh God, you know, I like this brand of knife and they're hard to get and i already just slipped and got one so why not get this one and i didn't so yay me I'm, I'm, it makes me feel warm and proud uh that i didn't buy that so there you go so uh, so it's all laid bare right there can't believe it it's, see really what i'm doing is sitting in a room talking at a computer but on the other end i have people who are like uh man we were we, we were not buying knives, and now we're going to go do it. Anyway, let's recap the town hall. So this last Saturday, we had uh, three guests on the town hall. It was awesome. We had Ernest Emerson on for about 50 minutes. It was great. He told stories. He showed knives from the vault. He showed his very first uh, CQC6. He showed the very first knife he ever made, uh, Bally Song, and just told a lot of great stories. Uh, showed a knife he made for... Um, uh, uh, Guitarist for the Rolling Stones. I don't know, having a having an old man moment. Uh, but it actually, I would uh, Keith Richards. So he showed a, a lot of cool stuff. Had had a lot of great stories. Um, great interaction. We had Edwin come on tell a story about using a CQC seven in a in a heated moment. Uh, not not a conflict, but in a rescue moment. He was rescued rescued someone with it, and uh, got to tell its maker uh, Ernest Emerson all about it. That was a, a cool moment. And then we had Alex Steingraber who's making really, uh, really awesome knives, uh, especially, well, uh, two that I know of, the Shark and the Sasquatch, those are his two models right now. And really he's perfecting his use of steel and his knowledge of steel, both in how it behaves uh, with the grinder, but also how it behaves after heat treat. And he's really, uh, he's one of these guys who's just doing a lot of investigation. He's, he's a, he's a, a, uh, a large and growing brain in, in knife steel. Actually, um, when he was on the podcast, we talked about how he wants to do heat treating for other people uh, at, a, at a reasonable rate and with a quicker turnaround than, uh, well, the people that we have to rely on if we're hobbyists, such as myself. And I am a once a year or a twice a year hobbyist, and I made this and this and uh, sent them to uh, Alex and and uh, he heat treated them. These are A E B L, and I told him the range I wanted, and and he worked within that range. And and uh, well, I'm very excited now. They're heat treated. I, I I did these like a while ago, and they sat around and they got some special attention from him. So I'm excited to turn them into something. Lindy Lou says that town hall was the first time I've ever really heard Ernest Emerson talk. He seems like a really cool dude. Makes me want one of his knives. He is a cool dude. He's like. Uh, 
Yeah, and and you look at him. He's uh, sixty five. He's someone that I admire. He's a he just turned sixty five uh, over I think in August or something like that. And he posted the workout he did on his sixty fifth birthday. And I was like, God, man, you know, at at, at my best, at the I, I would have not had uh, been able to do that. I don't think so. He's uh, he's stout hearted, and he puts his uh, he yeah puts his money where his mouth is. And uh, it's just a cool dude. Uh, Nick Martino, happy Thursday Night Knives. Thank you, sir. Absolutely love the town hall. I've watched it twice from end to end and have reached out to Alex. He lives 20 minutes from me. LOL. I grabbed one from him. Awesome. I can't wait to get his sharp uh, shark. I think the next one he's got is uh, I'm, I'm totally ridiculous with steals. Uh, and now I can't remember what it's going to be. I think it's um, he did an M4 recently, so maybe 4V, something like that. In any case, uh, after him, we had TJ Schwartz uh, come on, and it's great to talk to him. He's been on the podcast, too, and he's a, you know, he's just a stalwart. I keep using that word, and that's the wrong use of that word. I got to cut that out. He is a, um, not a journeyman. He's been around. He has designed a lot of knives. He designed the Koenig Arius. He designed the Koenig Zeneda, which he's most proud of because it's all dovetail construction. Uh, the CRKT Caligo, the Drop um, uh, Perpetua, uh, the uh, CRKT Overland, which I am smitten with, and then the Periscale, which is an interesting knife. Alex does such good work. He does 10V. Thank you, sir. Um, and uh, the Periscale, which is a, a folding knife with, uh, that has two scales wrapped in gutted para paracord. So you can, you know, uh, have all of that utility on a folding knife. So interesting dude. He's upping his capacity for production. He's getting a CNC. So he talked to us from the raw space where he was doing that. And we had a great time. Hello, Bob. First time catching the live stream. Excellent. Good to have you here, Monster Racing. Uh, I've seen uh, what well, we've commented a couple of times. Good to have you here, sir presumably. Uh, Bummer Lance couldn't make it to the town hall hopefully soon. Okay, so that was the last thing I was going to get to. We had Lance uh, Abernathy of Sniper Bladeworks scheduled to come on, and actually it was a miscommunication, probably mostly my fault, but he had a bit of a work thing come up and uh, and couldn't make it. So I can't wait to have him on the next one. It, it's turning out, you know, the very first one we had, we had 17 guests. It went for almost five hours, and it was fun. It was a blast, but it was stressful going from guest to guest and each guest I realized, which I could only schedule for 15 minutes. I wanted to talk to each one of them for longer. So uh, each time we're getting, uh, we're scheduling fewer and fewer people. And I thought four would be ideal, but we had three and that worked out really well because it was high energy. I was high energy all the way through, at least I felt and uh, could pay attention and, and people were into it. And Anyway, so next time Lance is going to come on, he's already agreed to it. We don't have a date yet, but uh, uh, he's going to clear his calendar. And hopefully you, you watched or listened to the podcast. Thank you, Plains Crafter. Town Hall was awesome. Great job of interviewing. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, but, uh, yeah, hopefully, uh, uh, well, if you listen to the podcast with Lance, you know he's a really, really cool guy. And uh, his process is interesting and his whole story is great. Uh, so town hall. Awesome. So let's get to the Patreon giveaway. It is the third Thursday of the month. And, uh, well, we do have a $10 tier over there at Patreon. Uh, we call them gentlemen junkies, but they could be, uh, women also, but, uh, gentlemen like the gentleman knife. We also have the tactical junkies at the $5 level, and we have the traditional junkies at the $3 level. And for all of you, it is greatly appreciated. Um, and I recognize that it's totally unnecessary and it, it is out of the generosity of your heart. And I appreciate it. So at the $10 level, we do a monthly giveaway and uh, I've, I've, I've been playing it close to the vest because I've been kind of uh, vacillating over what it was going to be. But this month we are going to do the Tucson T16, the T16. This is brought to you, brought to us by this old sword blade reviews. That's Dave, our good friend over there. He donated this to the channel, uh, as well as uh, two others, uh, one of which I'm fostering for a short while, and the other will be uh, sold. And and proceeds, I believe, going to Knife Rights uh, to help what's going on in Ohio. And I'm not exactly sure what is going on in Ohio. I have to check it out. But I know something's going on because I've been getting emails all day about it. And uh, Ohio is where I grew up. So I, I want to make sure that they retain their 
their newly found knife rights, they can now carry switchblades there, which is awesome. But anyway, tonight we're giving away this beautiful TS-16. It's got a titanium frame, as you can see, beautifully milled uh, with uh, fluting on this side and a really cool pocket clip, by the way. Sculpted titanium pocket clip. It uh, looks a bit like a... It's like a faux... Uh, a faux bag clip from this aspect. I don't think they meant it to even be that, but it's a really cool clip. I like it quite a bit. Uh, this stepped terraced handle here is so beautifully ergonomic. Feels great in the hand uh, in a regular standard grip like this. Uh, incidentally, if you ever find yourself needing it like this, oh, great knife, Monster Racing says. Uh, it fits great like this. This is a D2 version, now with Tucson that being the 16, the 16th model made. I think that's how it works. We have we have others around here who know way more about Tucson. Uh, if Jared's watching, maybe he knows. Um, great action on this thing, obviously. Uh, ball bearings and, and whatnot. Ball bearings! That's all ball bearings these days. It's so simple. Anyone see Fletch? Yeah, you've seen Fletch. All right, so uh, lightning holes, and I don't mean lightning like uh, Zeus throws, but lightning to lighten the handle. But also, they give great purchase uh, for the fingers that wrap around there. And uh, this is a quite an excellent knife. I love that blade shape. But if you tell me it's a reverse tanto, you don't get it. So it's not a reverse tanto. It's a modified Warncliffe or you know, perhaps a sharp edge, uh, a, what could we call this? An obtuse lamb's foot, perhaps? I don't know, but it's not a reverse tanto because such a thing does not exist. All right, let's bring up the wheel. Professor EDC, good to have you here, sir. Hope everyone is doing well. Thank you. I I, uh, I hope so, too. I hope so, too. I hope, uh, I hope everyone in Pennsylvania is wearing their mask inside. That's crazy. All right, let's spin that wheel in three. Two, one. Look at her go. Oh my goodness, look at her go. Kevin Seastrom, you are the winner, sir. Oh yes, look at that. This is your Tucson TS-16. It will soon be on its way to you, sir. I believe I have your address from uh, when I sent you stickers way back when. But... There you have it. This is yours. You are now the proud owner. But uh, really, thank you so much for for being a patron, uh, especially these days, man. I really appreciate it. Not that I wouldn't any other time, but um, you know, there's a lot going on these days, and and if ten dollars a month can 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 come this way, I, I I am humbled and I'm very very grateful. Thank you very much. This is a but a small token of my appreciation. And it will be on the way. Love the TS-16, one of my first Tucson models. Yeah, and 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 I I understand in doing a little bit of research, they did a couple of different handle handles on it. Uh, I think they did a sort of G10, and maybe they did it in N690 or another steel too. Love the TS-16, have it in tie in G10. Okay, G10. I have seen that model. Look at that. I don't think I've ever seen a Tucson that wasn't beautiful. Yep. They are. Very interesting, unique knives and beautifully built. Beautifully built. All right. Well, it's leaving. It's leaving the den. It's leaving the den. It's on. It's, it will be on its way to you. Actually, I'm going to the post office tomorrow. And uh, Patty, if you're watching, I'm sending something your way. It's been a week. Uh, I'm sending something to Ireland. Reverse tantos don't exist. Exactly. It's like... Um, well, I'm sure we can all think of something else. It's like Bigfoot. Uh, you can't tell me a two sheep's foot makes more sense than reverse tanto. Well, I'm not. I, I think I'm saying they're about the same. They're about equal. <laughs> uh, used to be consecutive numbering, but now they're just picking numbers all over the place, but generally upward in number. Okay. So safe to say that a TS-16 is earlier in their canon. And, oh, by the way, I didn't show you this. Such a nice backspacer. Like this whole area is just lovely to look at and touch. Congrats to the winner. All right. There we go. All right. So I want to get to a, 
excuse me, when I get back to work, we will definitely become a gentleman junkie. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, thank you, man. Well, you know what they say in a, um, well, not, I, I shouldn't say they, but, uh, if anyone listened to the most recent, uh, Joe Rogan podcast with, uh, 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 Christakis on it. I can't remember his, his first name, but he's awesome. I've heard him at a bunch of different places. Um, but he was saying, you know, uh, in a few years when all of this blows over, cause all in all, it'll take a few years. It's going to be the roaring twenties and things are going to be like super awesome for a while. Uh, Bob, I enjoyed Saturday interviews, but especially Emerson's loved it. Uh, me too. Me too. What can I say? I'm like, uh, you know, I could just sit there all day. I think a couple of people commented on that. You could just sit all day and kind of listen to his stories. OCD for EDC. How you doing, sir? Did you get a pa did you get the package this time? Hmm. What package? What package? I haven't gotten a package yet. Uh, I have not gotten a package. Oh, oh, oh! You're sending me. Okay, this is for the pass around group. No, I have not gotten it yet. Uh, but. Uh, Maybe I need to talk to you directly because maybe my address is not coming through right. But I cannot wait to get my hands on that. I'm writing a note right now. Look, it's going on the note card. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. All right. So let's go to li uh, Knife Life News. Can never say it. I want to talk about a couple of two new knives that are out. And uh, both of them I found in Knife News, which I love. It's no... It's no uh, secret here. I get a lot of information from them and or him. Benjamin Schwartz, the head writer over there, is awesome. I say this a lot, but he can take a mundane knife release and turn it into the most exciting knife event. He's a great writer. So anyway, uh, Real Steel, there you go. I mean, you know, for me... They're kind of always coming out with a new knife, or at least for a while it seemed like it. And then we hadn't heard from them for a while. And now something new is coming out, and it's really cool. And it's got a great name. It's the F24-10 Nutcracker. And it's a it's actually a really fetching knife. I think it's inter interesting. It's called the Nutcracker just in time for Christmas. Hey. Uh, but look at that. That's a beautiful knife, I have to say. And it's... um. Well, the, that uh, ergonomic handle is right up my alley. And that is that is sort of a sheep's footy uh, blade there, and uh, but with a nice belly. And um, I don't know, it just looks like very utility driven. You could, you could punch through a stubborn uh, clamshell package with that tip, but it's not too pointy. It's, you know, you, you could get away with telling someone that you use that for work and it doesn't look too aggressive. But I think the lines on it are beautiful. And you won't hear me say that too often about a steel will. Did I call it a real steel before? I think I did. It's a steel will. I do that all the time. Um, that and C CTSXHP. Oh, I just said it perfectly. All right. So maybe things are changing around here. But uh, it's uh, coming... G10 handle, uh, N690, I believe, and a great name, The Nutcracker. It, it, it actually is a terrible name, and I'll tell you why. What is a nutcracker? Uh, that's my wife's name. <laughs> hey, Mark, good to see you, sir. Uh, so, Nutcracker, really, it is a bad name. It's not evocative of something thin and slicey. It's evocative of something broad and squashy, you know? You want that in a knife. You want something thin and slicey. Nutcracker sounds like something, you know, you, you know what a nutcracker looks like. You, I, I don't need to say anymore. Bad name for a knife. Kind of cute C, cutesy for Christmas, but also a little bit like, don't forget about Christmas. Don't forget about, don't forget about steel will during Christmas. Don't forget about steel will. Get the nutcracker. It's a little bit, uh, a little bit too much. A little bit on the nose. I don't know but a beautiful knife nonetheless. And if you see it in color, yellow handle with a black blade, it looks pretty cool, I gotta say. So next up is something from James Brand. And um, I usually say James Brand with a sideways glance. Uh, I, it's, it's fun, I don't know, cause they're so cool. They're so cool. They're way cooler than any of us, but James Brand is cool. And their knives are, are undeniably, attractive and so this is a this is their new one it's called the hell's canyon and it's a kitchen knife it's like a five and a half inch bladed kitchen knife and it's it's a blown up version of their of their hell's gap um 
sort of EDC camp knife. Uh, and I think it's awesome. I love it. I think it's beautiful. And this is what happens every time I'm like, oh, James Brand, aren't they cool? Aren't they hip? But isn't that a sweet looking product? And these guys, I, I think they all came from Nike or um, some like really, really high end design houses and uh, formed James Brand. So, you know, like, like their branding, I mean, the fact that brand is in their name, their branding is is a very strong aspect and um, lifestyle branding is, is a strong aspect. And so in any case, uh, they're kind of following trend with a lot of other companies that are doing kitchen knives right now. And I got to say, I love it. I love it. I love the trend a, eh? but I really, really like that. The look of that Hell's Canyon in any case, and uh, sitting next to that delicious looking spatchcock chicken with the, with, I don't know, whatever that is, asparagus, gugutz. It looks so good, man. Uh, but so there you have it, James Brand doing the kitchen thing, uh, just like a lot of other people. So what do you think of that? What do you think of that, uh, the, this this kitchen knife trend? Is it something that every knife maker should do? Is it something that every <laughs> real steel will? That's right, baby. Uh, <laughs> is it something that all knife makers should consider? I mean, should you, if you're a knife maker, shouldn't you be able to make a kitchen knife, which is the most used knife we use? The balls. Wait, what? All right. Uh, I, I, I didn't quite see what that said. Oh, <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm, I'm getting you. It is a better name because it, it's a it's more evocative of a knife. So uh, before we move on to the state of my collection, I, I have to say, I forgot. Let's say James Brand is dubbed the hipster of knives. Yeah, exactly. But I still like their designs. To me, curious how their steel performs. To me, quiet carry is also in that in that realm. And I know people love their quiet carry knives. And I have to I have to admit, I've never experienced one. Um, um, just looking at them, they look nice. They and and people I trust a lot love them. So uh, no doubt they're great, but they, they don't get my heart racing when I look at them. Uh, but still, to me, I think of them as a hipster brand. I'm not sure why. Um, but maybe they're not. Maybe that's an unfair assessment. Uh, and I think altogether it's an unfair assessment. I'm dying to get someone from James Brand on the show. I've uh, I've reached out and haven't heard back because um, <laughs> I'm not cool enough. Uh, but uh, no, I'm just kidding. But I would love to have them on and 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 actually have a talk with them because it would. I know afterward I'd be like, oh my god, James Brand's the best. I love them. I'm getting all their products. And I'm not saying I'm a shill, but oftentimes you meet someone and you talk to them and you and you discuss, you know, you find out what their motivations are, find out what their story is. And it's interesting. You know, it, it is interesting. A guy who designs sneakers starts designing knives, if that's the real story. I mean, that's like that's kind of what I've grabbed out of the ether. Hey, Lavender Pants, how you doing, sir? Uh, I'm looking through new arrivals at Blade HQ and it's uh, like literally nothing but kitchen knives. I know I noticed that. I noticed that uh, just today. No, every knife maker should not be diving into kitchen knife market. Stay unique. Do what you do. Just follow, Don't just follow the crowd. Agreed. Like there are some people. Yeah, they, there are some knife makers that you, you wouldn't want to see a kitchen knife from. Um, you know, like I don't want to see a Strider kitchen knife. Uh, Rough Rider has an interesting lockback kitchen knife. No, they don't, Rusty. No, they don't. Oh, they do. It's actually pretty cool, I have to say. Uh, when I saw this, this this came in right before November. This isn't the one that I busted my November thing with. Uh, not just on the models to look like it's not. Yeah. Uh, so this is uh, the that new Rough Rider. It looks it's sort of reminiscent of a Santoku. Uh, it's kind of got that drop point. If Cold Steel can make a chef's night, every maker can. Um. You, you can cut like four tatami mats with those kitchen knives, bro. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Hey, no shade ever being thrown at cold steel over here because I love them. If I were to get a custom knife, it would be a custom kitchen knife. Yes. Uh, oh, I missed that. Uh, Groman makes fit. Mm. Groman. All right. Got to gotta look him up. I, I mean, I know the name, but I, I can't, can't conjure that up. Uh, yeah, Rusty. It, it it is it's worth your 15 bucks let me say that uh no side to side play uh good lock back uh pops out easily not that you need that in the kitchen my one issue is the blade needs to be broader um 
you're hitting the, you know, I, I did an onion with it, did the dicing thing, the sh -sh 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 and uh, on the on the on the on the downward, you know, your knuckles are just hitting. And uh, I'm not a knuckle dragger. Tops is killing the kitchen knives right now. So here's the thing, Nick. Uh, I, I I love Tops knives, as as you probably know, as you I know you know. But um, one thing I like about Tops knives is how robustly ground their knives are, and how how thick and you know. So you, those are not qualities you you want in a kitchen knife. I mean, robust. Yes, you want robust, but more than robust, you want resilient you want springy you want uh, thin um so my question has been like how thin do they get these tops knives are they as slicey as you need for the kitchen or are they beefy or, or less beefy outdoors knives uh just throwing it out there uh hey bob ryan's a new dad oh my god i have this in my notes right here sorry it's in my notes congratulations to ryan that's spirited blades he now has a son and uh, we'll leave it at that. But congratulations and blessings to you and your wife and your son. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I personally, I, I love fatherhood. And, and if it's something that's in your cards, God love you, man. I, congratulations. I uh, hope he's healthy and happy, just like you and your wife. So congratulations. Uh, Professor EDC, thank you for bringing that up. See, I write notes and then I don't follow them. Um, I didn't even do that. Yeah. Okay, let's do a pocket check, shall we? Jeez, we're only 32 minutes into it, huh? Let me show you what I'm carrying today. Yes, that's right. This was my first Facebook post. I was carrying my attention to detail mercantile Mark I large, four-inch blade, hollow ground, super thin, super broad, beautiful natural micarta inlay in titanium. Flipper is on um, nylon, smooth and getting smoother every time I carry it. And just, I love this thing. Ergonomic beast. Tops Frog Market Kitchen Knife. Check it out. Okay. So, uh, Dave and all of you, uh, I made a, a Frog Market style knife for uh, a good friend of mine. He still uses it to this day. Actually, I made it for him. And then about a year later, I took it back from him and ground it real much thinner than what I originally gave him. What I originally gave him was kind of like an elongated hatchet. And then uh, I had learned a bit in that year. Uh, can confirm the bed kitchen knives are nice. They look nice. I, I want a Zeba kitchen knife. If I, were to, if I were to mac out and get a really sweet kitchen knife, I would get a Zeba for sure, for a number of reasons. First, I think they're absolutely stunningly beautiful. Uh, I've been following him for a long time, the Victorinox Tinker and TRM Neutron, right on. Love the Tinker too. Uh, but I love his knives. I think they're beautiful. Also, they're made in Greenpoint, uh, Brooklyn, which is right around the corner from where I used to live. Great looking knife, Bob. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I wish I could take credit for making it. By the way, look at the inlay on the lock side. Just positively sick. Love it. Uh, so yeah, it would be a Zeba. For sure. So in my left pocket, I was carrying my little nerdy pocket pouch. I had the Fisher Space Pen. I had the I had the Mag Light. This is the most fantastic torch ever. Uh, speaking of torches, I finally got a respectable one. I got an O light, and I know it's only a twenty dollar light, but it's a very cool one. Does does the work for me? I thought it was going to be thin enough to keep in here, and I could. But if I wedged it in there, it's just a little too thick. So I think I'll leave it for something else. But here's something I love on these flashlights are these style clips, man. So you can just stick it on your, uh... you're all like, yeah, we know about that, Bob. We've been into torches forever. But I love that. That is so cool. Off-grid knives hat. Thank you, Carrie. Much appreciated. Uh, so, yeah. Oh, like I had that, but the left side pocket was none other than the, is that your only attention to detail mercantile knife? No, I have uh, a beautiful double-edged fighter with the, uh, with the um, tortoise shell handle. It's a gorgeous knife. Uh, it's over there though. <laughs> Sorry. So uh, the 66 calf roper in micarta, green micarta, 
such a great knife. Stockman pattern with the spade blade and the and the and the sheep's foot and the clip point. I love this knife. Really, quite an excellent knife. Uh, so, yep, that's what I had on me today. Sorry, I'm all out of order now. Let's see. So, update on no new knives November. I told you about that failure. Recap the town hall. I just mentioned Spirited Blade has a boy. Uh, that was because of uh, Professor EDC. Thank you, sir. Patreon, Patreon giveaway we did. Uh, let's see. Caleb says, had a sharp by design void. Oh, uh, oh uh, uh, Knife Nuts podcast edition today and a Hoback MK Ultra. My God, man. Whew. Was that in your Armani suit? And did you drive it around in your Bugatti? No, I'm just kidding. But that's a that's a nice setup. Uh, HK Conspiracy. Not sure what that is. I mean, I know it's a Heckler and Koch, but is that is that since uh, uh, Hogue has been doing them, or is that an older one? Is that a Benchmade? Uh, Best Tech Grampus uh, the, and the uh, r, r Trapper. So which Trapper? Is it the Bow Trapper? Just curious. Tom Brown tracker. Whoa. And a bulldog duck feather lock back. Bulldog duck feather lock. Oh, oh, okay. Did you post those on the Facebook page or someone did? Um, those bulldog, it was a bulldog lock back. Looked really cool. Tom Brown tracker. I mean, that's awesome. Walking around with a, with a, with a, with a Tom Brown tracker. GEC 13. What's the 13? What is the 13? What is it? Dag nabbit. Can't think of it. Off grid Viper. Nice. And the Rough Rider cotton sampler. Got, got me a cotton sampler right here. What do you know? I put a little purple fob on it. Isn't it fancy? Off grid Viper. That's a nice knife, too. Recon One. I love Recon Ones with the pop custom clip. That's a deep carry. Uh, and the Snaggletooth MF. You're good to go right there, sir. With the bug out Snaggletooth. AL, that's the um, what is that? Is that the is that the engagement ring and backspacer by rock scale design tops MSK? My gosh, and a Victorinox Pioneer X. The X is for the scissors, so that's a Pioneer plus scissors, and I believe that's an ALOX model. Damn, Rusty, I like how you walk around. That's awesome. Hey, Brian, how you doing? Malibu, he had a Protec Malibu today. It's a space pen, Jerry. <laughs> nice. I, I, uh, yeah, I'm old enough to remember that. Very nice. Uh, the Malibu. That is one that I've. Ha I keep kind of every. I've been seeing them a lot. I mean, they've been around a lot, but that is a knife that keeps getting posted. You know how some knives come and go, and you see a, pic a lot of pictures of them for a while, and then they disappear. Well, that one hasn't, and. It's got me all curious. Uh, the Malibu, that is. Uh, some kind of two-stone front flipper. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, uh, modded with thumb studs by Microphone the Knife. Oh, I follow him on Instagram. He's got a cool page. What's up, man? Hey, everyone. Hey, Junkie. We got Dub Lock. Uh, this is uh, uh, carrying my new Olight Warrior Mini 1500 Lumens. All right, so, okay, where do you torch freaks geek out on the lumens? Where is it unacceptable? Where is it, like, where do you want it to be? Like, you kind of want it to be S35VN or more, maybe, or, you know, that that's just some random. So what's the random lumens thing? Carried the Todd Fisher Archangel today. Very nice. Very nice. Oh, wait a sec. Oh, wait a sec. I don't think I know what you're talking about. Todd Fisher. I'm starting to conflate a couple of knives in my mind. And then the Archangel, I'm thinking of the dagger. Sorry, I, I, I'm not sure what you're, but that sounds sweet. You've always got something awesome on you, Dirk. C.H. Uh, Marshall for the day today. Don't know what that is either. You're all like, I thought you called yourself Knife Junkie, man. You don't know what the hell you're talking about, man. Uh, did you make face group? Yes, so I do. I, I have a Facebook group uh, that uh, Jim created quite a while ago and... Uh, we have only been posting uh, the podcast and videos to it, excuse me, but I hadn't been doing anything with it uh, otherwise because, well, because I have my own hangups about Facebook. And, uh, but just from hearing over and over how people love to buy and sell there and how uh, Jimmy Slash told me about what a great experience it is and all the people he's met over there on his Facebook group, uh, I finally decided to do it. And uh, yeah, so 
I, I'm, I'm going to see, but I'm not exactly sure what people look to get out of it, but whatever. I'm putting up what I'm putting up and, and I can't wait to talk to you all there. Old school Benchmade HK with a smooth yellow bone. Oh, oh, okay. Smooth yellow bone, regular trapper. I love bone. On knives, jigged trappers, I love. Uh, I carried my Farid K2. That's a nice big, uh, that's the the, uh, the the knife that uh, Spyderco made a version of. Plus a Tanto and Kosi today. Oof, man. Classy. Oh, you've got that new Hogue automatic. That's right. You just put up a video of that. That's a three and a quarter inch blade, right? Toting my Hinderer Fire Attack today. The Fire Attack is an interesting knife. When it first came out, I was like, eh, you know, that's cool. But it has grown on me just from uh, just from following people and seeing pictures of it, I got to say. Oh, 13 was a Congress. All right. Okay. All right. Whip is a single blade. Oh, I'm sorry, Jim. Could you put that back up? So the one I just got a Congress, the 62, uh, and mine is a double bladed with a with a pen and a, with a the whip is the single blade. They also had the multi blade on the same pattern. So I wonder is the 30 is the 13 smaller than the 62? Uh, just curious. I really like my 62, but only I, I really only like that pattern with the two blades because it allows the main blade to be larger than on the Whitler version, which has three really small blades on a large, on a large frame. Victorinox Pioneer Golden Alox. That sounds awesome. I've been, I've been, you know, in this, in, in this recent slip joint phase, got to say that my eyes have been wandering to the Alox uh, Victorinoxes recently, even though, excuse me, with, with all of this modern technology we have available to us, and all the precision that the Swiss just naturally have in their DNA. Why can't they make a locks with a toothpick and a damn set of tweezers? Because that's one, two of the main reasons I go to Swiss Army. Six hundred to a thousand lumens is all I ever find myself needing. Needing or it or now I'm not trying to be a smartass, and I'm not trying to split hairs. But I really mean is that is that what you need? Or is that, uh, is that what's desirable? Um, I'm splitting hairs there. I'm just curious. Just like I don't need S35VN, but I would like to have it. Is it that kind of thing? Boker Arbolito Escuela is my sidearm. Escuela. Is that a sidearm? So is that like a, is that in their, uh, is that their long clip Bowie knife with the, with the brass quillions with the knobs on the end? I, I might be I might be shooting in the dark there, but they they have some really cool. I, I don't know, maybe the way you said sidearm made me think of a, a fixed blade, and I know that Ar Ar Arbolito makes some really cool uh, of Boker makes some really cool Bowies. Anyway, I was just curious. Sky Warp, how you doing, man? Yo, I was on the wrong account. Well, here you are. Thank the heavens. It's great to have you here, sir. Dark Gravity says bench made mini loco today. <laughs> very amazing and underrated knife. That's funny because now that you mentioned the Loco, I remember maybe it was last week or the week before someone else was carrying a logo or maybe it was you, uh, Dark Gravity, a Loco. And I started off on a tangent about that knife and then something shiny came into view and I totally veered away. So I'm going to pick that, pick that strain up right now and I'm not going to look at the screen because I don't want to get distracted. But the Mini Loco, or the Loco in general, was, I thought, such a cool design and something different for Benchmade. Looks, it, you know, it's obviously a Benchmade when you look at it, but but just had that pistol grip. And instead of the thumb studs, it had the, the, the lozenge-shaped opening hole. It had an interesting shaped blade. It was different. Did it? I don't think it was on bearings, but it was supposed to be very, very smooth and just had a different look. And of course... I shouldn't say, of course, that sounds cynical, but you know, Benchmade is they're 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 late adopters of the exotic. They're um, <laughs> they're squeamish about uh, getting too out there, you know, with their designs. And I thought the Loco was a nice step in the right direction. It's like, okay, not everything has to look like like the government designed it. And I, that sounds like a huge diss, and I don't mean it like that. 
Benchmade has some really spectacular knives. Uh, but, but I get lost in some of the details because a lot of them look the same. And every police officer I've ever met, and I've met a lot, love Benchmades. And that's cool. But I always tell them, like, there's a whole constellation of other choices out there. Um, uh, but anyway, the Mini Loco, the Loco, that design, they were headed in the right direction. And they nipped it in the bud, man. Two years. Maybe it didn't sell well. Maybe that interesting, unique design doesn't really sell well with the Benchmade crowd. Obviously, it doesn't. Or we'd still be seeing it today. So I guess I'm just kind of, I'm just kind of saying they should do it for art's sake. But that's that's bull crap when you actually have a company, and it's your company. And a ZT zero four fifty CF in my pocket, still still in my top five all time ZT knives. I love that. And a Cold Steel Tanto Light, Tanto Light close by. Which Tanto? Tanto Light. I'm not sure which one, because I think they have a couple of Tanto, like light Tantos. Oh, light Moonlight Mode is the one I use the most. Moonlight Mode. 600 is need, 1,000 is all I can stand. Got you. Okay, because if you hit something close up with 1,000, you're, you're probably getting a lot of uh, a lot of bounce back. I carry a Rovivon. Rovivon? Rovivon. A155. Uh, 550. I can't even read numbers now. Lumen Maximum works great for me. So, uh, so what's my little mag light? What is this like? 17 lumens? I don't know. Uh, I just joined the Facebook group. Awesome, Sky Warp. Uh, so I will see you there tomorrow because I'm going to log on to Face Group, Facebook. <laughs> uh, depends upon how lumens are distributed. And lumens to light overall, uh, the lights overall size. High lumen and small package means it gets very hot quickly. Interesting. Yeah, that, that, that makes sense. I agree. Both the Loco models are underrated. I have to say I like the presentation of the blade. Uh, I like that angle, the pistol grip. I think that's great. Uh, Benchmade to me is like a non-knife guy brand. Yes, it is like a spectacular non-knife brand non-knife guy brand because so is m tech and lots of other uh like inferior brands uh complains about benchmade all looking the same as <laughs> hinderer fanboy okay well touche well <laughs> well said uh, i <coughs> i agree on the cookie cutter aspect and the loco is a great direction i wish spider co and benchmade both would step out well I would have to say that if we're making a comparison, Spyderco is by far the more adventuresome uh, of the two in terms of, um, well, uh, in terms of design, uh, designs that they will have in their lines, but also uh, collaborations that collaborate way wider, way wider for lumens, for lumens. Well, dude, I've been working on my visual night purple like my whole life, so I don't need I don't even need four lumens. I just walk outside, bro. Lindy Lou says, typically more than 1,000 lumens. Most of better flashlights run around 3,000 lumens, like the MSR and the 4-3A. Uh, also, the Kelvin temp will affect the perceived brightness. Oh, geez, man. I don't even know what that... I, I know Kelvin is like a... A thing like Celsius and Fahrenheit, what a scale, a temperature scale. That's how you measure temperatures in space. But I don't know. How, I don't know how that relates to torches. Uh, there are so many things to lights. It can be overwhelming. I've been lucky. I didn't get too far down the rabbit hole of lights. Yeah, Dirk, you're down the rabbit hole of watches. Horology, I think they call it. Or is it horology? I think it's horology, which sounds kind of, that sounds like a different study. Let's just say that. Um yeah, watches. I could see myself going down that that watch that watch road, but uh, yeah. So uh, anything new from any of you all out there? I I I I I already laid bare my failure and and how I have a a uh, little rattler that you'll see on December first. I'll probably make a video on that very day. Um, I showed you the knives heat treated by Alex Steingraber. They're, they're not new. I've shown these to you a couple of times before, but now they're heat treated. That's all I'm dealing with. I've been carrying this a lot. 
Um, actually, I, I really like this knife, and I'm looking forward to doing a, a review of it. I know Dirk did a review of it, but I did not. Yeah, don't get into watches. I did not watch your review of this, Dirk, because I didn't want it to, to paint my feelings of it, but I, I really like this knife. This is the off-grid knives. Um, uh, this is the Scorpion. It's in their Elite line. They have a couple of tiers of products, and this is their high-end. It's manufactured by Wii, so the, the build is beautiful. Oh, ho whore. Or horology, because of <laughs> yes, yes, me too, me too. <laughs> oh, I know horology. Higher the number, warmer the color. Got gotcha. you. Higher the number, the warmer the color. Okay. Yeah, that is a good one. Well, Slicey's good with that kind of stuff. Hey, uh, Kelvin is the color of the light. You can think of it as the shades of light from sun through the day. To Two K is the sunset or the incandescent bulb? Huh? Oh, oh okay. That's photography esque, vi uh, film esque. Those off grids are awesome. I I'm telling you, uh, I really, really like this. So this, this thing, this, uh, this one in particular. Well, I've, I like uh, the other knives I have. That this one is awesome. Love this. This is way up my alley. This is the black stallion, but this I keep picking up and carrying. And right now, really like that off grid. Right now, this is not really my bag. I'm not so much into titanium frame lock flippers right now. I am more into, uh, even though I carried one today, uh, I am more into like my thumb study, uh, Emerson y kind of stuff right now. Um, getting the off grid black stallion soon, you will not be disappointed. That is an awesome knife. Uh, but this I keep picking up. It's it, it carries beautifully. I love the way it feels in hand. To me, it's reminiscent in uh, design, not in how it feels in hand or how it operates, but it's similar to the, uh, has the same feel to me as the SOCOM Elite, kind of that handle faceting. Love the, the design of the handle. Kind of has a similar feel in hand. And actually, uh, incidentally, it reminds me of another... Uh, and I don't, uh, of another Microtech a little bit, just in the blade tip, uh, the LCC designed by uh, Greg Lightfoot in the early 2000s. That sort of aggressive clip point, or yeah, I don't know if it's, a, I don't know how to put that, but it's a, it's sort of a clip point, but it's really forward. Gee, if there was a word for it, if it was like the reverse of something that already exists. Um, but I really like, I really like the, uh, the, the this blade shape and uh, carbon fiber inlays are done nicely. You know, this is made by Wii. It's beautifully made. If you like the design, you will be so pleased. And I really like this design. Feels great. And here's a little detail that I love that also reminds, you know. Okay. So right here, there's your thumb ramp. Just beyond the thumb ramp, there's a little dip right there where if you're really reaching up there, it just feels good. It's just a great place for your thumb to rest. And uh, well, that's that's what I experience. And I feel the same uh, in this with that little hump right there. It's a little more extreme there, but in any case, I'm loving this knife. And uh, I think that uh, Kerry Orifice is doing an awesome job um, designing these knives and getting them out there, getting them in people's hands. And I think he's a smart dude. Um, to make a couple of different levels of, you know, uh, obligations, so to speak, whatever you want to pay 70 bucks, you can get something like this. This D2, uh, black stallion is an awesome knife. This is made by best tech, another company that can make knives, you know, and uh, it's got a very thin blade, very broad high, like half, half height saber grind, <clears throat> but the blade stock is so thin. This thing is slicey as hell. You got a pretty robust point. And uh, all off-grid knives are great, but I missed it. I think he was saying, but the elites are probably super awesome. But the elite ones are really awesome. Yes. Yeah, really. I mean, this is this is really awesome. Uh, but both are excellent. Look at them. Look at the G10 milling on this. The patience. The patience of the craftsman who did all that milling. It's just mind-blowing. You know, over and over until they have a knife and then and then extrapolate out, you know, thousands and thousands of knives. Think of, think of all those divots. So uh, uh, 
also in in the appreciation of knives i already have category um pete peter uh, uh, over at uh, therapeutic edge did a video on this knife today uh the fitch design um ingress and man i love mine i i have this this is a prototype that uh, that nick was kind enough to to give me and i love this thing and just seeing uh seeing it through new eyes uh with therapeutic edges video today got me got me excited about it all over again so i've been having this out on the desk today flipping it a lot playing with it a lot and then also this old honey five and a oh no it's a five inch uh voyager from uh, cold steel from the late no uh early 90s early to mid 90s bought this in new york city right in times square back before it was hobbled hobbled by the pearl clutchers and the hand ringers and the karens and the no it, it but it did used to be cool um, but it's going through a period of extreme uncool right now uh in some ways uh but but our good friend uh ray over at everyday city carry could probably tell you a lot more about that than i anyway so had that out today just trying to appreciate what i got you know that's me mr appreciation so, well, anyone out there have any ideas what they would do if in the near future, well, there were sort of power grabs or, you know, people got out of hand with, with power they had acquired through crisis and, uh, huh, man, maybe they said something crazy like you got to wear a mask indoors, you know, or, uh, indoors, like in your own house indoors, um, which is happening in. I've heard about in Pennsylvania, which is insane to me. But what about if this, what if, what if this were about knives? I know it's kind of a trite, trite thing to bring up, but uh, I don't know, man. Uh, sometimes I, I, I wonder about like, you know, knives are easy enough to get away with if you're not someone who runs afoul of the law. You know, they're not easily detected and you generally don't, you know, they, they don't cause you much trouble. But uh, what if they became really illegal, like, like highly highly controlled like how would we react how would this industry react um what what is too far how would people wh how would you respond to that i'm just curious and you know you don't have to you don't have to respond in real time but this is something i've been thinking about because i don't know i don't know you you always have to be a little bit suspicious of the people who are uh going out of their way to have control over you and power over you. And then when they start telling you ridiculous stuff that you have to do that they don't feel they have to abide by, you know, just makes me wonder what, what's the other kind of stuff they're going to try and pull shall not comply. Exactly, sir. I mean, that's, that's kind of how I feel, but you know, if it came to knives, it would definitely be that, but man, there's, well, anyway, we don't get political on this uh, on this show, and I'm sitting here, and I'm I, I feel my mind going down a slipping down a a, a a hole. Happening in other countries now must suck bad. Yeah, well, we we talked uh, on the midweek supplemental about a year ago about how they wanted to sell only blunted kitchen knives in uh, in London, or maybe it was all of the UK or uh, uh, all of England. Uh, and I thought that was crazy. Obviously, that's crazy. Obviously, that's crazy. And then they're going to make all hammers out of Nerf foam. I keep every single one I have. Me too. I mean, I kind of feel that way about everything I own. I'm not, I, I don't see myself going anywhere and, and not owning it anymore. I mean, like, oh, okay, here you go. No, I don't, I don't see that happening. Easy to say I will not comply, but I tend to follow the law. That said, what they don't know won't hurt me. England is an example of how control, yeah, how it grows. It's slow. It's slow. It's little, little things, little things. And then they add up. It's like compound interest. And then suddenly, how do you get it back? How do you get those knife rights back? Whew, we got to have, uh, we got to have uh, Mr. Mr. Knife rights back on the show. We, uh, uh, um, I keep thinking Richter. Oh my good, my goodness. 
Well, we have to get him back on the we have to get him back on the show to talk about knife rights. Jeez, oh Pete, guys. Sorry. Ritter, Doug Ritter. I would resist a law that required my knives to be dull. <laughs> yes. Yes. Me too. Me too. That used to be the law. It seems like every knife I got in the 80s was dull. I am a law-abiding person, but taking our knives away is going too far. Way too far. I agree. And it's it's actually, you know what? I, that was a cheap question I set up there. Because obviously, I'm talking to a bunch of knife guys and gals out there. A bunch of knife nerds. And you're all going to say what I want you to, not what I want you to say. You're all going to say what I think you're going to say, which is, ah, never go for it. So that was a cheap question. I apologize. But I can't help but, but think about it because uh, uh, they should outlaw cars too with that mindset. And hammers. No more hammers because, man, those things. I see a hammer and I'm like, geez, I should, maybe I should pick that up and smash someone with it. It's death by a thousand cuts. Exactly. Exactly. It's the boiling frog. I'm in Canada. So are you carrying around a Hudson Bay knife? I hope you are. That is such a cool knife. And I just watched, does anyone watch, anyone familiar with Trollski, Trollski on, uh, on YouTube? He's, he was on Forged in Fire once, but he's a Polish knife maker and he's got a cool forge and, and he does great. Uh, yeah, right. Oh, yes, yes, please. Yes, exactly. That's the kind of thing that should be outlawed. Pull through sharpeners. <laughs> scrape some, just scrape some metal off, make it sharp. But uh, that guy Trolsky uh, did a great video that I just watched of him making a Hudson Bay knife. And then he goes out in the middle of the woods and makes a fire and cooks a steak and cuts it up with this big Hudson River. Uh, or not Hudson. Is that what the Hudson Bay knife? It's like a big Bowie knife. Uh, that they use that the trappers used for everything. Uh, what was Slicey's last comment up there, Jim? No one has ever talked about knives about taking away. I'm sorry. <clears throat> no one has ever talked about taking anyone's guns away, just making some more difficult to get. It will be the same with knives. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yep. That's exactly right. Yeah. Maybe. Well, no, no, I don't even want to say that. That's ridiculous. Welding hammers, especially. Ooh, I don't know what they look like, but they sound menacing. Um, you know, the only, you know, it, it, we didn't say anything when they took away assisted opening. And then they took assisted opening. We didn't say anything when they took away, uh, what other things do we hate? Uh, uh, tip down carry. We were silent then. And they took away the, you know, but then eventually they get to, you know, the Sultan. Uh, eventually they get to the, the the carbon fiber and the and the and the micarta and we have to stop there anyway I, now i'm just rambling stupidly uh i'd like to thank you all for coming and joining me i think i'm gonna bow out on this fine evening kevin johnson says haven't seen jim in a while hope all is well jim is right behind the camera you know uh well right behind the switcher and uh well jim has decided that it makes more sense for him to be behind the camera editing and producing because that's where his real passion lies and uh hey i'm all for that i'm all for following your passion and uh it incidentally uh man i love the way he directs and uh well his directing is way on point so thank you jim as always so there you go uh for jim and slicey let's see we didn't say anything about them taking away assisted because it sucks <laughs> yeah exactly well i just didn't want to give them any ideas even assisted even assisted even poorly fitting frn handles thank you bob and jim my pleasure sir and thank you to all of you who've tuned in and spent some time here uh, it's always appreciated um i i look forward to this every week and uh, i've mentioned this before even on low energy days like tonight we had a nice big dinner. I had wine and, and I was like, oh, oh, I could just totally sit down on the couch and relax. And I'm like, but I got Thursday night knives. And when I sit down, it's always energizing. And uh, a lot of that has to do with you guys and gals out there uh, reaching out and just watching Gute Nacht, mein Freund, and, and just talking and talking knives. And yeah, love it. Good, good on you, Jim. Miss your face. Well, I, I reserve the right to drag Jim, even if it's kicking and screaming, on the screen every now and again to, to say hi and to put me in my place because that is what he's awesome at, aside from uh, directing and editing this show. Bye, Dilip. Good to have you here, sir. 
Goodbye, everybody. Monster Racing, such a great show. Glad I made the live stream. Awesome. Thank you. I'm glad you made it, too. I appreciate it. All right. For Jim behind the switcher, as always, working his magic. And uh, for me, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco, uh, here to say uh, we got some great new stuff coming up shortly. So stick around and definitely don't take dull for an answer.